Hey guys, all right, we are back for another episode of Noah's Ark, and today I'm really excited because we are filming inside of Paprika in the heart of the East Village, right on St. Mark's, and I am joined by a very good friend of mine, Miss Theo Koken is here <laughs> with me. Finally, I've been trying to reach you for months. And I know. It's like crickets on the phone. <laughs> Just don't call me back. It's <laughs> <That's> not true. <laughs> She's really busy. I'm busy. She's really, really busy. Yeah. So um, I'm excited that you're here because in one of the last episodes of Noah's Ark that we did, we actually spoke to your really good friend, Miss Guy, mm -hmm. and the yes. interview was incredible. Now, um, to our viewers at home, explain your connection to Miss Guy. So I met Guy on the first time that my old band, The Luna Chicks, toured in Los Angeles. And um, he was pretty much the first drag queen I ever met. And then, little did I know, he was going to become the one to teach me all my tricks, you know, with makeup and hair. I want to go back a little bit later to what you learned from Guy. But mm -hmm. now, your husband, mm -hmm. you actually met him through Guy? Or, yes, yes, Guy and another person in the city were the ones to say, you know, you you have to meet this this guy he just moved here. <laughs> so this is um, Sean, uh -huh. Sean Pierce, um, who's in the Toilet Boys with Miss Guy. So for some of the people who don't know about the Luna Chicks or how you got your start in the music industry, explain that. So the Luna Chicks started in high school. We were at LaGuardia High School. We were all like, oh, well, we all like good music, so why don't we start a band? And yeah. Two of the, the um, Gina and Sid both had, one had a bass, one had a guitar. I didn't have anything and I was kind of like, I don't want to get a drum set. So I was like, I'll be the singer. I mean, literally it was like that. Our other friend had a guitar, so she became the other guitar player. Yeah. On our second show we ever played, Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth came and saw us. So Thurston Moore from Sonic Youth sees you guys, the Luna Chicks, teenagers, performing your second show. And what happened? And he thought we were trying to be a noise band, and we thought we were trying to be like Kiss or the Ramones, but it mm. just didn't sound that way yet. Right. We went into the studio with him and Kim Gordon, and it kind of didn't work out musically, so then we ended up using somebody else, but really they got us our start. I mean, I have to be grateful and thankful for that. Everybody who was big at the time loved us. The guys liked you. They, they all wanted to bring us out with them, but then the major labels were still like, oh, we're a little bit scared. Do you think they were scared of you guys? Not because of your music, but because of your image. I think maybe. Because then, but then at the same time, then you would see like a band like Marilyn Manson, who were scary. They were like dark, they were satanic, all these things that were like, woo, but it was allowed for some reason, I think, because they were guys. Well, yes, they're guys. And because guys. girls need to be more attainable, and you know, it was frustrating. Did you guys ever get told directly to your face to change your look? or sorry, you can't do it because you're girls, or you don't have to name names, but did any were you ever sexually harassed by guys in a band or just treated less than? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think oh, you know, there are those classic things of like, people thought we slept with people to get tours, you know, right. which didn't happen. People thought, you know, I, and to us, it's like, I never thought like, oh, I'm a chick in a band and I'm gonna, to me it was just being me. When right. I got on stage and when I get on stage, I sort of, you know, I, I have my sexuality, but there's part of me that feels like this superhero that right. nobody can touch me. And you can see that. And it's, you know, almost like I'm taken over by something. So when people be like, oh, what's it like to be a girl in a band? It was like, really? Like people would ask us that in every interview. And it's like, I don't know what it's like to be a guy in a band. So how can I really answer that? Yeah, and something that I think is interesting, which I've heard from a, from other female musicians, especially from that era, is not so much about the misogyny from the other bands, but also some of the jealousy and the infighting from some of your other female peers. Uh huh. Now, mm -hmm. of course, you don't have to name names, but from the outside, you would think that all these girls would be supporting each other. Yeah. Some of the girls in L7 got us our first gigs in LA. So at the very beginning, that's incredible. We, you know, it was it was Jennifer. But there was a time later on when we really wanted to make a tour that was all female bands, you know, and we put it out there to some of them, some of the bigger ones that we knew and had relationships yeah. with, and they wouldn't do it. I want to see, I'm hoping that, and I feel like this sort of new feminism thing is rising up again, and I, I hope that that happens, and I hope that the industry will open themselves to it. 